Hi! In this episode of Toys Bag Zen, I'm going to be taking a look at these Toys R Us exclusives from 2009 figures. Here you can see we have Shipwreck with Polly, and they're in the Arctic Threat uniforms. They come with a lot of things in these packages. If you look on the back, there is a file card with a blurb about the character. You can also see a blurb about G.I. Joe, and there is also an Arctic Threat um, blurb on the Pursuit of Cobra. These are from the movies, so these are really neat. Here we have Carl Doc Greer. He comes with a lot of things. I see some soft goods in there. And again, you can see the G.I. Joe blurb, the Pursuit of Cobra, Arctic Threat, a little bit of uh, uh, some artwork there, and Doc's file card. These were released in 2009. They've been on my shelf since then. And uh, I'm excited to get these open and take a look at them. So stick around and let's get into these. So now we get them out of the packages, you can see that they clearly have a lot of things that they come with. None of these figures in the package have instructions on where and how they're supposed to hold their weapons, so uh, we're going to explore that now. So uh, the first video on these Toys R Us exclusives, I didn't really talk much about the figure articulation, I mainly focused on the uh, vehicle. These are in the same style as the figures that came with the Sting Raider. We had Copperhead and the Swamp Viper. So there's the same style. These are supposed to be Arctic figures and uh, they do have quite a bit of articulation. So they do have ankle uh, articulation, double knees, which is nice. You can really get a lot of articulation with those double knees. We've got leg articulation no no hip articulation no that doesn't really articulate at the hips but at the um, chest it articulates and it does have a pretty good chest crunch too so that's really nice we have articulation at the wrists or here you can see it's articulation right where the gloves start on the forearms we've got elbow articulation and shoulder Doc here, he does have this uh, piece here that goes over his face like that, and it doesn't really move, and it doesn't, it's not really soft, so it doesn't really get in the way of articulating Doc's head side to side and up and down just a little bit. The color here is really nice. He's got the G.I. Joe symbol here. 
and if you want to take a look at that now he is a doctor so he's a rescue guy I do like the color I mean if you're a rescue person then you need to be able to be seen um, and uh, he does have those colors now I really really like his helmet this is really similar to the original Doc's helmet but when we got Doc I think it was in 1984 85 when we got him it was just one color that light brown or light tan color and um, it had these on the side but I never knew what those were as a kid and they look to me like there's some kind of bandages or something like that and it does fit on his head actually quite um, quite loosely it's not really a hard plastic so it's better now that I've pushed it in a little bit but it doesn't fit on his head I could see that falling off and getting loose. I do like the gold on his sunglasses. Those are really cool. It even has paint apps on the stretcher here. It's really neat. You got some paint apps here. You can see the symbol here. There's a lot of texture on this. and it's really similar to the one that we got uh, back in the 80s too. He's got a bag here with some more lots of paint apps, silver and red. They really went all out on this figure when it comes to giving him lots of detail. That's hard to get on him. Um, if I was a kid playing with this, I would probably put it on and never want to take it off again. But there is his satchel. He also has these for climbing, I guess, like rocks or mountainsides or walking in the snow. guess it goes on like that and it does have a hole in the bottom of it here so that you can use that for the uh, figure stand too so so far so good all of his accessories are fitting on his body we also have uh, this here this looks like some kind of medicine or something like that so that fits in his hand there doesn't seem to be a holster or anything like that that you can put this in so it's gonna have to go in his hand like that we also have a flare gun so put that in his other hand Like that also we get the soft goods here it's like a sling that you can put the stretcher in and when a helicopter comes in to airlift a patient out uh, it can airlift it out at the strap just like that really cool and then he also comes with this backpack that opens up and there's so many paint apps in here it closes up like that and it does have a thing so you can stand it on the on the ground like this or put it on his back there's a little peg there but we also have room in there for all of the things that he needs for a rescue we also have a can of H2O or water. We have a flashlight which he can hold in his hand. Looks to me like we have some bandages and a stethoscope there. This is like a this looks like a survival knife with pliers. 
You're going to need that when you're out. And that looks really great. And then you close that up. And put that on his back like that. And that's what he looks like. He's on the stand with his ice shoes on. They get the holes in it. Next we have Shipwreck. Now, I wish they would have had Snow Job instead of Shipwreck. But, I mean, he does look good. He has all the same articulation as Doc. Um, his I notice his knees are really, really tight. You can hear that. Almost like a crunch. Was, that's just the ratchet in his knee. His knees are really large because of the Arctic suit he has on. You can take the jacket off. It's got two snaps here and it's got two on the other side. And underneath you can see his body's the same as Doc's when it comes to articulation. He has an ab crunch here and you can do an ab crunch and twist him at, uh, at the chest. I'm going to leave the, the jacket on though. You could probably take that off. His Arctic clothes are really well done. I like the sculpting. I like the color. They look great. He's got some pouches here with probably some knives in there. He's got his hat on, his winter hat, and a little white in his beard there. You can see he's got his backpack. I've seen this backpack on several figure, Arctic figures before, similar to this. It's got quite a bit of detail on the back of that, and it's got like snow and ice build up on it. It looks really nice. We have snowshoes. Now these snowshoes uh, are really similar to the ones we got from Snow Serpent back in the 80s. They look quite a bit like those shoes. But there is a little bit of a difference to them. But they do have that little hole in there. Not even just a peg. But it's got an extra hole in there. So I guess you peg it in to here. And then I guess if you wanted to peg it into the, uh, the stand that he comes with. You can do that. So let's see what that looks like. He does stand really well without the figure stand, but now that he's got the snowshoes, he's going to stand really good. So that's awesome. I like uh, the different color in the gloves, and he also has a symbol on his left side of his chest, so that's really cool. He came with a hook. For rescue, I guess he's going to rescue. If he wants to rescue somebody, he can pull them in. He does come with a really nice rifle. Two-tone, brown and black. It's molded in brown, but then it's got the black detail. So you can hold it like that. And, of course... We get his parrot, Polly. Now, it doesn't really... Polly can't really, like, sit anywhere. His uh, claws are really, really small. Like, he would always sit on his, his wrist like that. So there's really not a place to put Polly. I guess I could figure out a place to put him. But the other thing that he has is, like, a harpoon gun. And this is a really, this is really cool. Usually the big guns uh, I'm not a huge fan of, but this is a really nice looking gun and it has a really long rope on it. It can go pretty far and it's, it's pretty powerful. Uh, I'm probably not going to have him hold that, but I'll probably just have it standing like upright like this on display with him. He does stand on his figure stand uh, with the snowshoes on so 
that's what those holes are for. You really don't need it, but I still think it looks really good. In conclusion, I think that these two figures are pretty amazing. I really like them. I had no idea how good these figures were. I've had these in the package since 2009 when I bought them. And I wish I would have taken them out a long time ago, but hey, this is my opportunity to show you guys how good these figures are. And uh, I really like them, and I do recommend these figures. They're probably not that expensive to find on the aftermarket. They can't be any more than you know what they were in in the stores I probably paid about maybe like 17 18 dollars for them back in 2009 they might have been even cheaper I can't remember now but I can't imagine me spending a lot more than that if I was to nitpick a little bit the only thing that I could say about these it would be nice if Polly would be able to perch on shipwrecks arm or even on his hook that he's got or his backpack or something um, if anybody sees a way that I could do that I could see that perhaps he could maybe hook on to his hood up here on the top one of his claws has got too much paint in it so you can't get that hooked on anyway so maybe I'll clean that out and try that again but I really like these figures I think they're fantastic these were Toys R Us exclusives and I'm happy that I could show you guys today. So thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bag Zen. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to see new videos coming up in the future. And make sure you share these videos to your friends or other people that you think might enjoy watching my content. I have over 170 videos now. So if you ever want to look at the other older videos, I've got lots of cool reviews, toy repairs, and toy talk. So thanks for watching. See you later.